What's up there, good people of the world? It's your man, the Big Heavy, and if you're like me, you're witty, charming, perhaps you could stand to rock a few less cheeseburgers every now and then, but you also do a lot of note-taking. In my case, I travel around, talk to a lot of people as part of my day job, take a lot of notes, whether it's trying to capture a conversation, trying to formulate my list of things I've got to do, or just trying to sketch out ideas and kind of put some thoughts together that I'll later turn into a presentation or a conversation or something like that. Also, if you're like me, you've maybe thought about how do you digitalize that note-taking process? There's a whole bunch of reasons why you might want to do that. Uh, maybe you want to be able to turn your handwritten notes into a PDF that you can share with your team. Maybe you want to have a backup of your notes. Maybe you just want to not have to carry around a notepad and pencil anymore and use some cool digital device and have an excuse to buy a new toy. Whatever the reasons are, if you've done any research into this space, you've probably come down to the question of, do I get something like an Apple iPad with the Apple Pencil, which I have here. This is a third generation Apple iPad Pro. Or do I get something like the Remarkable 2? Again, if you're like me, you've seen this thing 7,000 times on your Instagram feed. You know, you've heard of various podcasters and cool folks using these guys. And I think there is a right device for you, but it kind of depends on how you're planning on using it, how you're thinking about your approach to portable devices, and a whole bunch of questions. You know, they're both great devices. They both work fairly well, but there is a device that's right for you. But you need to understand how you work, what you want to accomplish, and I want to try and help frame that up for you so you can make the right decision. In the interest of full disclosure, Bought the iPad Pro with my own cold hard cash. I've had this sucker for maybe about four years now. Used it a ton, traveled all over the world with it. The Remarkable 2 I got for free. I do product reviews as another one of my side hustles. They aren't related to the YouTube channel, but lets me kind of share with you some of the cool stuff I get. This setup right here is about 700 bucks all in. I think the Remarkable 2 itself is about 400 last I looked. The uh, fancy pen is 140 ish. And then the nice leather, real leather cover is another, um, I think, 150, 160 bucks or so. In the case of the iPad, there's, you know, 15 different permutations of this thing. If you're going to go this route, I would suggest the more current Apple Pencil that kind of attaches to the side versus the older one where you have to plug it into the bottom charge, which is a little uh, little goofy and unwieldy. I haven't done a ton with Android tablets. I know there are some that have various uh, pencil slash stylish type options. So if you're an Android person, maybe that's more your route. But I'm specifically going to talk about the iPad versus Remarkable. You could probably apply similar thinking if you're looking at Androids to what I'm going to say about the iPad. Let's start here because I think the first key question that you need to ask yourself if you're thinking about these devices is do I want a general purpose computing device or do I want a digital notepad? And that may seem like a bit of a nuanced discussion, but I think that's the, the key question you've got to ask yourself to get down to which device is right for you. Because again, they're a fair amount of cash. I think you could even configure an iPad and a stylus for a little bit less than the Remarkable 2. So we're talking, you know, maybe four to seven, eight hundred bucks, depending on what kind of setup you get. And when I say general purpose computing device, that's a fancy way of saying that the iPad is essentially a Swiss Army knife. You know, if you've ever seen a Swiss Army knife, it's got 15 different tools. It'll open your bottle of wine. It'll you know, pull out your splinters and whatnot. And this guy will do, you know, pretty much anything a laptop can do. I can do probably 85, 90% of what I need to do on a laptop with my iPad, which is one of the main drivers for why I purchased it. I can write documents, I can respond to emails, you know, in a pinch I can do PowerPoint slides on here, and I can also take notes. And furthermore, there's probably, you know, a couple or three dozen different note-taking applications. In my case, I use the Microsoft product suites a lot, so I generally take notes in OneNote. On my computer, I'll, you know, type up notes. With this guy, I can do handwritten notes with the stylus. You know, I can draw, I can do multiple colors. There's all sorts of neat little tricks it can do. If I don't like OneNote, I can use Apple's built-in note-taking program that they've gotten here. I can choose from one of those dozens of other note-taking programs. There's a whole bunch of drawing programs that I can get for this guy. I'm not an artist of, of any any sort, but I've seen people create amazing drawings. And you know, the pen has pressure, or the Apple calls it the pencil, has pressure sensitivity. It has you know tricks you can do when you tap it twice. It does all sorts of neat things. And that's not only the power of this device, 
but it's also kind of its Achilles heel when it comes to note taking. And what I mean by that is, you know, imagine you're going into a meeting with a key customer or, you know, maybe your, your boss or whatnot, and you open this guy up, it's going to ask you for a password, you know, the face ID feature where you can unlock it with, you know, by looking into the camera is excellent. It's way better than typing in passwords, but it works maybe, you know, 40, 50% of the time. So I'm walking into my meeting with, you know, you, the most important person in the world. I got to like hold this thing the right way. It unlocks. I've got to swipe up. You know, maybe I was looking at uh, YouTube and watching big heavy videos because those are the finest videos on all of YouTube. And, you know, my boss is looking and saying, this joker on your screen, you got to, you know, swipe out of there. I got to go and find my note application, you know, get to the right place. I got to get out my pencil. You know, sometimes there's a way to turn the pencil on and off in various apps. Maybe I don't have it turned on. There's potentially multiple steps to get yourself ready to take notes. And then also while I'm sitting here again with, you know, you, the most important person on earth, and I'm, you know, trying to focus on you, I'm taking my notes, I have notifications popping up. And, you know, it could be everything from, you know, your significant other sent you a message. It says, you know, OMG, this is terrible, need your help urgently, dot, dot, dot. And then you're like, holy cow, I got to look at that. You know, it could be goofy stuff, you know, junk from your friends. They're sending you a picture and that's popping up on your screen. Yeah, maybe the thing's bleeping and blooping because you forgot to turn off your speaker. So these seem like kind of nuanced, uh, you know, non-problem problems. But if you are in that context of having a really important meeting where you need to be really focused on what's going on and really focused on the person you're talking to, this has infinite distractions, you know, flying across the screen and all that stuff. It also very much looks like you're using a gadget while you're in that meeting. You know, people are going to be looking to see what's going on. The thing's backlit. So if you're in a dark room, you know, it's essentially shining a relatively bright light on your face, assuming you've got a, a, a notepad that's got a white background to it. A lot of reasons why it's not great for note taking. And again, you've got to weigh that against the fact that this guy can do 90% of what I need a computer to do. So if I'm going on, you know, an overnight trip, if I'm going out into the back country, I've even taken this on bike trips where I need to stay connected to work. I can do 99% of what I need and also take notes on here. And it's, you know, good enough in that capacity, plus replaces a laptop or whatever general purpose computing device I need. That is the pro and the con of the iPad, essentially, that you've got this general purpose computer that does just about everything a computer can do. And, you know, by the way, it can be your digital notebook. You contrast that with the Remarkable 2, and you want to think of this guy not as a computing device, not as a tablet, but essentially as a digitalized pen and paper. And I think that's the design philosophy that the company went with when they built it. So everything from you know, the size and shape and weight is fairly similar to a notepad to the fact that they specifically designed their stylus. And I can't remember what they call it, whether they call it a pen or a pencil or some other thing. Uh, but the stylus, the tip, and the screen are all designed so they feel like you're writing on paper. And I've tried to do kind of a blind test where I pick up a pick up this guy and write on it and then pick up a pen and paper and write on it. It's not perfect because this has a very distinct feel to it. So you kind of know you're, you know, you're using the remarkable, but in that scenario, you can't really tell that you're, you know, pen and paper versus a, a digital device. So it feels very much like you're writing. The screen is an e-ink display, which essentially means it's black and white and there's no backlight. So if you're taking notes in the dark, it's going to be a challenge. You're going to need some more, right, more light. I generally don't find myself taking notes in the dark. But what I think that means is when you're sitting down with someone, it looks fairly natural, like you're sitting down with a pen and paper. You know, there's no light emanating from the thing. To my knowledge, I don't think it has a speaker. If it does, it, you know, it doesn't use it all the time. So the thing's not beeping and blooping. There's no not notifications flying around. And you also only get one note taking application. You know, on the iPad, you can choose from dozens. Here, you kind of get what it's shipped with. There may be a way to sideload other stuff. I've never gone delving into that because I don't have time for that kind of noise anymore. But you get one application and it's designed to operate like a paper notebook. So you open up the home screen. There's this idea of notebooks on here. Now, if you can kind of see that, I've got a bunch of different notebooks on there. I can open one. Each one can have a different style of simulated paper. So I like a grid pattern after having lived in Europe. If you've never tried it, give it a try. It's very nice for taking hierarchical notes because you can line everything up. You know, if you're somebody that went to college, you can use the college ruled 
never understood why colleges had a monopoly on how they ruled notebooks. But the, that aside, there's also some templates for you know things like a daily planner, a checklist, and all that sort of thing. Just as you would have a paper notebook that has one style of paper, each of your notebooks in here can have one style of simulated paper. You get a choice of different pens. There's everything from a simulated pencil to markers to fine, liner, fine liners that have different performance that act in a slightly different way. Your black and white you know, feels like pen and paper. You even have pages in your notebook. So I write from top to bottom in this guy, and then I've got to go to a new page. Most of the notepad applications on the iPad, and again, you get a choice in this matter depending on what application you use, but most of them essentially have an infinite sheet of paper. You know, I can start writing, scroll down, scroll left, scroll right, and have this never ending sheet of paper versus this guy still maintains that idea of pages. And I'm sure I could store a lifetime's worth of pages on here so it's not a space constraint, but it is that kind of mental difference between the two where you know this acts like paper, you know, this guy has this novel idea of a, an endless piece of paper. Now you do get some connectivity benefits out of the Remarkable 2. It does have a Wi-Fi radio. It will automatically, or you know, more or less automatically, it'll prompt you to update software relatively easily. It also has a cloud sync functionality. So I think by default, if you don't pay for any services from them, it'll back up all your notebooks to the cloud. So if you lose the actual device, you know, it's a four to seven hundred dollar kick in the groin, but all your notes, assuming you have important information in there, are saved up to the cloud. You can retrieve them later. They do have a couple of subscription options that let you synchronize to different applications like OneNote, uh, Google Drive, Dropbox, kind of all the typical cloud services you'd expect. That lets you view your notes and convert them to PDFs, send them around. I find that fairly useful. Uh, probably the piece I use most is I'll use the desktop and mobile apps so I can go and check on something I noted down if I don't actually have this physical device with me, which is kind of cool. Depending on the application you use on the iPad, you get the same functionality. In my case, again, that's OneNote. I have OneNote on pretty much every device I use from my phone to my desktop to my laptop. So. Any notes I write on either one of these guys are going to magically appear on all my other devices, which is pretty helpful for when you need to look up information. But much like the iPad, this guy's greatest feature is also his Achilles heel, again, depending on what you're trying to accomplish. So this is a highly effective replacement for pen and paper. It kind of takes the best parts of taking notes on pen and paper, which is not having any frills, not having any distractions, you know, just having you and the physical act of writing being the focus of the activity. And it sprinkles on enough you know, digital magic in terms of infinite number of pages, infinite number of notebooks, all stored in one little device that gets backed up and lets you share and all that good stuff. That's all it does. You're not checking email with this guy. You're not browsing the web. You know, They do have some sort of web browsing capability, but it's essentially garbage. Uh, I wouldn't you know, use this as a general purpose tablet. That's a decision you've got to make is, do I want a portable general purpose computing device that lets me take notes and you know, gives me enough optionality that it works pretty well, but is also going to have those distractions. It's going to have the beeps and bloops. It's going to have things flashing. You know, it might take me a half dozen steps, which you know, take 15 seconds, all things considered, to get into your notebook. But those 15 seconds, if you're meeting with the CEO of your company, could be pretty important since you're you know, hemming and hawing and, and wasting someone's fairly expensive time. Versus this guy, you know, I don't have any passwords set on it. I think you can put passwords on your notebooks, but I basically you know, flip it open. It goes immediately to where I was last working. So, you know, I go back to the last page I was on and I'm ready to get to work. I'm ready to start taking notes and it acts intuitively like, you know, a traditional notebook. I write, I can flip it over, I can erase. There are two different pens or whatever they call them available for this guy. The more expensive one gives you what essentially is a little eraser on the back and it's got some give to it. So it kind of feels like a pencil eraser. You know, you can push down and kind of feel that it's erasing. The cheaper version does not have the eraser. I make a lot of mistakes, so I'd go with the eraser if you're going to go with this guy. So that's your decision point. So if I were making this decision and it was my you know, 700 ish bucks on the line, if I didn't have either of these devices, if I didn't have an iPad or Android tablet, you know, maybe all I had was a laptop and I was interested in a digital note taking device, I would probably veer towards the iPad. You know, I think having a general purpose computing device 
is great, especially you know if you travel a little bit now that the world's opened up from COVID. This is awesome for when you're taking like the three, four day weekend trip and you're worried about staying connected to work and being able to get some stuff done in a pinch. You can do it with this guy. You know, it's, uh, you know, I've gone for a week business trip and just use my iPad when I've had my regular laptop in the shop or for some reason it was broken. You can do everything from watch a movie on the plane to take notes in a meeting to, you know, work on that PowerPoint that somebody sent you while you're on vacation that you've got to finish in a pinch, which granted sucks. And maybe we have a philosophical problem as Americans with working too much, but I'll leave the philosophy alone. This guy will let you take care of business when you need to in a pinch. If you've already got one of these, um, you know, and you have the ability to add the Apple Pencil 2, you know, I would skip the one that hangs out in the bottom. It's kind of goofy. You know, I would think about that. I think the Apple Pencil 2 is 100, 150-ish bucks. That's a nice way to try out note taking on a digital device if you've never done it before. See if you like it, you know, if you absolutely fall in love, but get frustrated by the beeps, bloops, notifications, and all that other jazz. Then maybe it's time to think about something like the Remarkable. Uh, on the other side of the coin, you know, if you're somebody that doesn't do a ton with your computer, you know, maybe you're somebody that is a writer, maybe you're an artist, maybe you've worked primarily in pen and paper, and you're just kind of you know looking for a way to get that ability to have backups and be able to share more readily than with a physical notepad. The Remarkable is not a bad idea. You know, if you have no interest in an iPad or maybe you have a hundred dollar tablet that lets you watch movies on the plane, but doesn't give you a very good note taking experience. And you're really focused on that ability to capture your thoughts, sketch, you know, draw all that stuff. As long as you understand the limitations of this device and that it's a digital pen and paper, not a tablet replacement. I think you'll be pretty happy. Furthermore, you know, if you're like me, would I have bought one of these with my own 700 bucks uh, to get this kind of setup you see here. And you know, again, you could trim that down a little bit. Let's call it 700 bucks. Uh, would I have purchased this to augment my iPad? You know, I don't know, I'd, I'd be a little bit on the fence. I know they put these guys on sale every now and then, you know, depending on the sale or if, you know, I think there's coupon codes and stuff out there. You know, if I could get it down more around the four or $500 price point, and you could probably do that by skipping the uh, you know, real leather case. They have a little slip-in cover. There's aftermarket covers that are a little bit cheaper. You know, I wouldn't skimp on the pencil or the stylus with the eraser. I think that's well worth it. You know, in that case, maybe that does make it worthwhile, particularly if you take a lot of notes and, you know, particularly if you're in kind of critical conversations where if you lost those notes, it would be a problem. If you rolled in with something like an iPad where it's potentially serving up as, as being distracting either to you or to the person you're talking with, then, you know, this guy starts to make sense. That's the, the breakdown I would suggest. That's how I would start to think about it if I were either considering these two devices or you know something like an iPad, or I was thinking about adding a Remarkable 2 when I already had an iPad. When I travel on business now, kind of my mix, if I don't have to do anything with video and I don't have to do any intense you know, PowerPoint or graphics work, I'll generally travel with these two guys and I'll use my iPad as my computer for email, documents, all that stuff, and I'll use my Remarkable as my notepad. If I'm doing something more intense where I'm going to have to do all that you know, content uh, creation type work, I will generally take my MacBook for doing the real work and I'll take my Remarkable if I'm gonna be in a lot of meetings and talking to a lot of people and need to take notes. If I'm not gonna be in a lot of meetings, you know, if I'm going out somewhere to, I don't know, I, I'm usually going somewhere to attend a ton of meetings, but you know, if I had a long plane ride, I might take all three. I still love the iPad for the airplane. You, know, you can flip it out. You can watch a movie while you're doing takeoff and landing. Much easier than the uh, MacBook to kind of get out when you're when you're in an airplane type environment. And also, a you know, great way to watch a movie or two. You're obviously not watching movies on this guy. So, hopefully, that gives you enough of an overview to make your own decision. Again, I'm not a sponsored affiliate or whatever of Remarkables, but I would hit the Google machine and look for discount codes on these guys. You know, I know they've done sales every now and then. So it is really a nice device. I won't, you know, there's a zillion reviews out there of the specific device. It's nicely made, nicely put together. I can say the same thing about the iPad, nicely made, nicely crafted, has held up well. You know, it, it looks fairly new considering I've done everything from take it on 500 mile bicycle trips to you know, traveling around the world with this thing. 
So they're both well-built devices, well put together. You know, you spend more scratch on these guys than you would an Android or something generic, but the quality feels like it's there. You've just got to really sit down and ask yourself, you know, if I've got 700 bucks to spend, do I want general purpose computer that happens to take notes and is highly portable, or do I want a digital version of pen and paper? With that, thanks for watching. Hopefully you are well equipped for all your future noteworthy events. And this is the Big Heavy asking you to note down, to be kind to each other, wishing you peace and prosperity. Big Heavy, out. Ever wonder why every talking head on YouTube asks you to hit the like and subscribe button at the end of their video? You were right, because we're living in a computer simulation. And our benevolent robotic overlords get just a little bit of energy every time you hit that like. So do me, the rest of civilization, and our benevolent robotic overlords a favor. Match that subscribe, be kind to each other, keep living your simulated dreams.